We are already through half of iRacing's versions of McLaren's World's Fastest Gamer. And now, after having two fantastic races at Suzuka and Circuit of the Americas, we land here in Italy. Monza, the world's fastest race course in Grand Prix racing. As we will take on the chicanes, the lesmos, the fantastic atmosphere that only Monza can provide. That's on Racebot TV, that's on iRacing Live, and that is next. Christopher Ravel here. As you guys know, iRacing is coming out with dirt and it's been a long time coming. So I'm here today to kind of show you around the sprint cars and hopefully give you some insight for whenever you first drive it. So here we are at Williams Grove, gonna go out and make a couple laps in the 410 wing sprint car. I'm on default setup with a gear change to a 522. As we roll out of the pits, you guys might notice that the car wants to pull left and you have to hold the steering wheel right to go straight. As Chris Fowler would say, welcome to Milan. Welcome to Monza. And welcome to round three of World's Fastest Gamer here on Racewatch TV and iRacing Live, a part of the qualifiers for the iRacing version of World's Fastest Gamer presented by McLaren. It's Will Vincent, Jake Sperry, just the two of us here tonight because, well, Paul's at some random racetrack, probably looking at McLaren's Jake. Probably, but I hope it is that he will be looking at McLaren's. It has been a very busy day, a very busy weekend actually here on Racebot TV. We have been very thin on the ground, but of course, uh, when it comes to a race like this at Monza, you can't ask for anything better in terms of what we're going to see in quality. It's a historic circuit that has been around since 1950 and even before that. And you look at just how many classic races get churned up year upon year upon year 
in any given condition, actually, at Monza, you know that you are in for a treat when you see the circuit on any calendar. Try came into iRacing 2015, 11 turns. Fastest lap set by Martin Cronke, 1 minute 34.053, according to our stats anyway. But we also want to give a quick shout out to people that get it done. They see them up on your screen right now. But Jake, round number three right now. We'll talk in a moment's time about the championship protagonists. But for the moment, we've got to remember the fact this is Monza. This is a high speed racetrack. It is, and round three is typically known as moving day in the world of golf. It's where you jostle yourself and have a good showing. Those who don't have it fall by the wayside, those who want to go and make something out of it, get themselves to the top. And being a high force down, well, not a high downforce racetrack, but a low downforce racetrack, I should say, you look at the circuit and you think, well, do Redline really have that same sort of affinity with the low down four circuits? I'd say no. So when it comes to the championship, there's going to be maybe a couple of changes coming out of this one. Before we have a look at what the championship standings are heading into this event, here's a look at what happened one week ago. <laughs> Green flag in the air, here we go. And again, a slow start there by Team Redline. They didn't fix their issues from yesterday. And that means that Jamie Fluke and David Accor going side by side into one. David Accor with the race lead. Is he able to stay behind? The answer is yes, he's about half a second behind. So he's well inside that DRS zone, but Jamie Fluke behind him as well as a further. Oh, he's gone for the inside. And they make contact. They're side by side as they hit themselves now down towards turn number 12. This might not be one wide, this might not be two wide, it is three wide. Look at that, all the way down to the inside goes Jamie Fluke. He's gonna run over basically the curb from where the two tracks merge together. And it is gonna be Frank Shawhorse in the lead of the motor race. But that was a very controversial move there. It's very difficult. I think Shotos definitely had a lot of overspeed heading down in towards turn number 11. The contact came together, but it was very, very cheeky what he did to Jamie Fluke. I think that's the second thing that yeah. you need to look at that situation. All over that anti-cut curb, though, there was Freak Shothorst, and he is trying everything just to hold any slither of memorandum of the race lead right now. Crosses the line, five laps to go, half a second between them and just a little bit more. I think Jamie Fluke, if he can just about keep it within three tenths of a second, has a chance, and that's a major mistake, Pex from Shothorst. He is crumbling. This is a fantastic run now for Jamie Fluke. He will have DRS wide open. He will have the Urs wide open. Is he close enough? He was four tenths of a second, heading himself out of the corner. And you can see defensive line there by Frank Shawhorse. Fluke goes around the outside. Shawhorse, oh, they made contact for the second time here today, Paul. And Fluke That's goes to the race lead. It's a little bit naughty, it's the gloves off racing this. Shotos is almost around. We saw him have issues uh, last time out of Suzuka. And uh, well, F Jamie Fluke, what a move. Massive wiggle though, out of nine from Jamie Fluke. Allows Shothorst another opportunity then on the brakes into the left-hander of turn number 11 out on circuit. And there's a big wiggle. And actually that's the position being given back there potentially by Jamie Fluke to yeah. try and get that better run going through. What a very weird situation from him and in fact it was oversteer talk oversteer out of the corner my mistake so uh, issue for Jamie Fluke position through Frank Shothorst through turn number 20 they come for the final time Frank Shawhorse exits the corner and Frank Shawhorse will win for Team Redline here at Circuit of the Americas Welcome back then to our pre-race coverage here from Monza. And well, Jake, we were talking about off air, what happened at Circuit of the Americas one week ago. And again, the continuation of Redline. They are struggling at the start. 
We're going to talk about a technical situation here because what I've heard from Dom Duhan, who is a technical principal for Team Redline, is a simple fact that they struggle on their starts because of the fact they use a foot clutch compared to a hand clutch. Discuss. Well, it's always very interesting when you look at where you try and find your technological advances or not. I mean, that you talk about what happened with, say, SDK Gate was always looking at a technological advance and trying to find a way to narrow the gap, essentially, between certain teams and certain other teams. But a hand clutch compared to a foot clutch, well, you know, the foot clutch has its advantages that you are working with very much the similar same principles that you have in a car. The moment you turn to a hand clutch, you're actually using a different set of skills. And I think that's very difficult to learn. But if they feel that it's the right way with Redline, and of course, working with Fanatec very closely to make sure that they get everything perfect and get themselves going, you know, if they think that it's going to be beneficial in the long run, then that's going to be something that's really useful. Something else that comes into mind is how that actually is used within a lap wheel. Because if you're having to take your hand off that wheel and you're pretty much driving the circuit in a McLaren one-handed for the majority of the circuit. It yes. just reminds you of Fernando Alonso in the F-Duct, and I remember very vividly in Spain, where he went around the final corner, and he had one hand on the wheel for the final corner. It causes more chance for incidents, so that's where I maybe wouldn't like it over a foot clutch. And the thing is as well, is that a foot clutch, of course, the release rate is a certain speed, which is probably more than compared to a hand clutch. If we come to the finals, that will be an issue. Exactly, because it might not necessarily be that you're running with a hand clutch. It might be that when you're going through all the testing situations, it's very clearly a foot clutch. So you have to readapt and realign. And I think that for a lot of drivers, if they have been taught in one way, yes, you never forget how to use a clutch. You never forget how to drive a car, but it will take you longer to work things out and get things right. And you have to do a override in your brain, essentially, to think, well, what is it that I have to do? Okay, I've got to use a clutch as well. I'm using three pedals. Okay, um, now what sort of thing? So you look down and you think, now what? It's it's difficult for Redline, but they've already got two drivers in, so they've already got two drivers combating to try and find that situation. If Shothorst becomes the third, then I have to say he's in a better position if he was just a driver on his own trying to use a hand clutch. Yeah, and I would say one of the other issues is, is that a foot clutch might hurt at the start of the race but a race here is 25 30 minutes long and that is not the defining factor here we have got ourselves then the statistics heading into this event there they are he says up on your screen face your horse 789 points after two rounds compared to david the corpse 762 Malcolm Parson turned there in 653. Ilka Hapala has 572 points. And Joran Jonik there, 496. They are your top five, Jake. Thoughts about that? Because David DeCourt, Frank Shawhorse, very close up top. But there's a very big gap between David DeCourt and Malcolm Partington. There is, and I think that some of that may come down to the fact that there's races every single day. Some decide to run more than others and take the average, but that's by the by. You look at Michael Partington. He is a driver who is a lot newer to the McLaren than both the Corpse and Shothorst very clearly are. And when you look at Michael Partington, what, what he's done, he's only turned up really well in the last year or so for Evolution Racing Team and said, actually, here I am. I want to announce myself. His plan is to qualify for the Road to Pro, what happens in probably a month's time or so. Mm -hmm. And the issue is that he isn't naturally invested in the same sort of battles that, say, the Corpse is and also Shothorst is when they're in that iRacing World Championship Grand Prix Series. And that's the disadvantage that Partington has. But what it does say is that Michael Partington, even though he is in this early development, and yes, he has some work to do, he is showing that he is World Championship material by the by. But three of those five also have experience of Monza this year in the Racing World Championship Grand Prix Series. Frank Schuhorst, David Accor, and also Ilka Hapala. So the question will be, will that advantage them or will the neutral track state hinder them because of the fact that it's going to be so different from what they saw back in late April? Well, I wonder how much Frank Schothor saw of the Monza race when he got crashed out at turn number one in the Racing World Championship I mean, Grand Prix Series. He did the testing, didn't he? 
But he did the testing, yes, yeah, so he's had that. But you have to remember, though, Will, they haven't been there since round four of the championship, which was back in, I believe, April or May. So it's a very long time ago in comparison to where we are on the 1st of October. So they've had effectively five months to not think about it, not race it. And that, if you haven't raced a circuit for five months, you might as well say, well, I haven't raced this circuit. It is effectively brand new to me again. And drivers, although they'll be quicker to pick back up at where they were, it's still going to take some time for those drivers. And I think that's why it's going to be an even playing field today. The drivers are about three minutes away from heading towards the qualifying grid here. Qualifying and the race happens immediately after itself here on Racebot TV. A part of McLaren's World's Fastest Game of the third part of qualifications. Jake, because you've not got ball, it's only on you. Who's your pick? Um, Jamie Fluke. I think it's three different winners in three. I think Jamie Fluke is a driver who showed a lot of promise at Circuit of the Americas in a circuit which had a slight favouring towards it. I think that Apex have worked on top speed. I see that Peter Berryman got the pole in the Irish World Championship Grand Prix Series. I think Apex have a very good set for this circuit, and I think that Jamie Fluke will use that to the best of his abilities. So when Ryan says ERT for the win, do you not agree with that? Well, he's an ERT driver, so I think there's a twinge of bias towards it. But realistically, podium for them? Podium, yes. I can I can see a podium for Michael Partington. It depends, though, on how up and down he's been because he has been up there scrapping it out for the podium. But by the same point, he's been down in 10th position in some races. So it depends on which Michael Partington shows up today, if I'm honest, Will. But and the thing about this is as well, this is not for pro license for the 2018 Irising World Championship Grand Prix Series. This is not about anything else but getting into World's Fastest Gamer and the finals. We've got Gregor Hootsie, we've got Isaac Price, we've got Butter House, we will have one other. Who do you think that one other is going to be, Jake? I, I honestly think that it's going to be David DeCorps. Um, nothing against Frank Schothos. I think he's a fantastic driver. He has uh, driving in his blood. Stein Schothos is easily a very good GP3 driver. But you look at what David DeCorps has done. Yes, he has flown under the radar a little bit. But DeCorps has been a driver who has embroiled himself within sim racing. He isn't afraid to go step into a Grand Prix Series race and race at other circus gates, other drivers. And in fact, it's that sort of level where he's practicing more than everyone else, not necessarily at the same circuit, but it's that willingness to involve yourself more and put more time into things that I think that David Corpse has used to his advantage. And I think that with the disadvantage that we're going to be seeing from Redline here today, I think he will just try and score enough points here so that he gets himself across that line at Interlagos, which is very clearly a Redline circuit. That's your views then from the driver, the member of, of course, the Racebot TV team of Jake Sperry. We will take a break for just one moment's time. When we come back, it's race time here. World's Fastest Gamer, round number three or four here from Monza. <laughs>
racing. You wanted the best. You got them for a breast. Often imitated, never duplicated. The greatest show on dirt. The world of outlaws. Absolutely, and this circuit is very unforgiving. It is a little bit edited in the fact that you look at Parabolica with Freak Shotos running through it right now, and there is a little bit of runoff, but of course, it is a very compact circuit when you get right down to the nitty gritty. Any mistakes, they will be punished here. You have high curbs that certainly do rattle the suspension. You've got to be careful about the way that you're dealing with the circuit at any given moment. And Shotos into the Variante Diretofilio, turn number one, just about gets the vehicle turned around in that section. And now to Curva Grande and the Della Roggio will. This is the first drive you need to look at. And just behind him, Davide Corpus is following in tow. They certainly are. You have the ERS that you can deploy in maximum when you're doing a qualifying lap in comparison to, say, having to make sure that you recharge it every single lap for a race. That's always going to be something to keep an eye out on. And I mean, the corpse, more importantly, bottomed his first lap wheel. So he'll have one more opportunity to get that lap. So it's a one lap shootout for the corpse. He has to get the next lap right, or he suffers the same fate as Ilka Harpala did last time out. But Shotos to the line. He's going to make sure that he runs as close as he can. 122.3. There's the benchmark here for everyone to go through. Valete behind 23.4. Jamie Fluke, though, keep an eye on him as he drives to the line. 22 flat pole position, as I thought for the moment. Yeah, indeed. So Ilka Harpala then heading towards the line. Apologies there for the mic issues. Ilka Harpala up into third place, Jake. Yeah, up into third for Hapala. He needs a very good recovery, but argument is, has he already lost his opportunity at world's fastest gamer? I would assume, yes, he has. My goodness, I've just seen Zelensky have a big 180 coming out of the first Lesmo, and that is Bobby Zelensky still trying to adjust compared to a NASCAR. 
Yeah, we got Jean Vorderheide on pit road as we speak. Talk about Dutch drivers, so to say. And we had one, of course, just about a few hours ago, taking victory in terms of the FIA Formula One World Championship. That was Max Verstappen. It's a smaller grid here today, but we have got already some drivers who have qualified. Bobby Zelensky has not yet set a lap. Kazuki Umashima working himself right now through the second of the chicanes into Lesbo number one. This is Kazuki Umashima. This is Racebot TV fan immersion. On a warm-up like then, quite clearly for Kazuki Umashima, but still, he's got a long way to go because he is not qualified yet. 14 drivers have out of this field here today. And well, you do not want to start at the rear of this field with only three minutes left in qualifying right now, Jake. You don't, but you have to say, Monza gives one of the biggest opportunities to making overtake. So if you do start from the back, you have a lot of DRS availability to use to make all those moves. And David Corpse, the driver I need to have a look at here because he's rounding Parabolica in the number six machine. Needs to make a good drive to the line, needs that good lap, and he'll charge all the way to that line, which comes up quickly. 122-1, that's front row, and in front of Shothors, exactly what was needed out of him. That is exactly, again, but the thing is, he won't have a lap to respond. So that's all he will get right now. David Accor is on track right now. Frank Shawhorse is not on track. Frank Shawhorse will not be able to do another lap in qualifications. Ilka Hapala will not do another lap in qualifications. Lorna might get another lap in. He might do, but it's going to be very, very questionable if he does. When you cross the line and finish that lap, you technically start your second lap. So it might have to be a case of doing them back to back if your second lap certainly does work. He'll round Parabolica, hoping to get it good. 173 kilometers an hour before getting back onto the power and charging 270, 280, 290, 300 kph and going towards 350. No lap time set, but Umashima we need to keep an eye out on. He's rounding Parabolica now here will Omishima will come past start finish line what will he do the answer is going to be a good lap it, there fifth place for him yeah fifth place for Umashima it's solid but Umashima is typically a very solid driver when it comes right down to it and the lap times that he consistently sets. The one driver who hasn't set a lap time, Bobby Zelensky, the number seven machine, hailing himself out of Club California into the right of Parabolica, looking to set up a very good run. He uses all of his road tax and a little bit more as he comes out straight through and a typically wider line actually coming out of the exit and no lap time again. So Zelensky is starting dead last for Coanda sim sports as well uh not Coanda sim sports sorry he's got vrs backing he's not Coanda sim sports i'll take that one back clip but angle. clip angle that's what i was looking for there right there but jamie fluke then pole position that's huge it is and for a driver who didn't score many points in the early stages of what was the racing that happened what was round number one will you have to say because of sim expo fluke was always going to be on that back foot but he's proving his worth right now getting himself onto the front of the grid pole position and i hope that he does a very good job of things because pole position here is the best place you want to be if you're stuck down in position number 13 let's say like jake hewlett or vrs grand sim sport He's got the big checkup at turns numbers one and two, the Variante de Retifilio. That's a nightmare for him, and it will mean that he will lose so much time because of it. Yeah, and there's your starting grid then coming up for you on your screen. Jamie Fluke has pole position. David Court alongside him. Four one hundredths of a second back. Frank Shawhorse in third, and Ilka Hapara rounds out your top four. And Jake, as we head on back, with Mishima in fifth, Jean Jonek there in sixth place, but the rest of the grid... They also look very, very close. 
They certainly do. If you look back, all those split in the by a second is nine positions. Jan von der Heide, who has been the master of being silent about scoring his points. He's there in ninth. Now you look further back, actually, you talk about being everyone within, what, three seconds with Diego Jimenez there in 18th. Pretty good timing then between all of them. You normally see a little bit more separation when you have so many different classes and licenses coming into this one. But it always proves to be a good race. 20 laps today. It's a short one and it will go like a blink of the eye. Yeah, there's the track conditions for you then. 11 turns. Debuted on iRacing in 2015. It's 3.5 miles in length. Lap record set by Martin Cronke. These are the guys that get it done here on Racebot TV and on iRacing Live. But now we want to head ourselves through to the start then of your grid because we've got yourselves drivers already lined up on that assigning grid as we speak. They are almost ready to go racing. Round number three of McLaren, world's fastest gamer. Where is pole position guy Jamie Fluke? There he is. Now we're ready to go racing for 20 laps. Engine revs will rise. We are green here at Monza. Fantastic start there by the 07 machine as they head themselves to turn number one. What's the story, Jake? John Jitch around, and it's a big, big instant at turn numbers one and two. The Variante de Retifilia, he tried to go through. There was contact behind, actually, involving Michael Partington, of all people, turning Jan von der Heide around, and there was always going to be a bit of contact. John Jitch was up on two wheels at one stage. Well, there's a replay then through turn number one. Three wide. Hags on Court Motorsports. You've also got yourself, oh, a Ryan team around as well. As uh, Jan von der Reed there had himself an issue. Down turn number one, lap number one of this race track. But out front, David Decor leads. He leads by about two and a half turns of a second over Jamie Fluke right now. He now is your race leader as we'll complete that number one. And it was a perfect start for Davy de Corpse as well. He'll be very happy about that. No DRS on the opening two laps. So Shothor Sluk into Parabolica didn't materialize just then. But this is what we're seeing. Dirty air effect. It was a great run out of the corner for de Corpse. Not so much for JP Fluke. But will he be able to manage to close that gap down even without having DRS to work with? He's trying everything that's possible to close it back to de Corpse. A look at the Retifilio. Nope, doesn't happen. But look at how it bunches back up. Look how much later Shothor is able to use those brakes and bring himself back into play. Yeah, the trees are a big part of this racetrack. We go on board then with the driver of Dan Decor for the moment's time. He continues to lead this motor race lap number two then of 20 here on Racebot TV and on iRacing Live. You can, of course, find live timing and scoring by visiting racebot.tv forward slash timing out of the course of this event. But Behind that battle going on, we've got yourself Josh Thompson right now. He's been in a battle with the driver of Moose Luna, as I believe I can see. We've got on board from the rear, Moose Luna, and Luna now up to P number seven. Yeah, Marks Lohner then is getting himself plus one, then in sixth position, actually. Oh, well, yes, uh, seventh position overall. So he's had a mistake on this lap as Marks Lohner because he's lost a lot of time in comparison to Michael Partikin. As such, Josh Thompson able to get onto the rear, as will Matteo Calastani of the Positive Sim Racing Team. And this is something that we do expect battles lower down for more important points as well than just simply what we normally see at the front. Every point counts. And for someone like Josh Thompson, who is in a learning stage. He reminds me of Sebastian Job about three years ago trying to make something happen. But look at how Shothos is closing down on Jamie Fluke. He looks down to the inside at turn numbers one and two. The bar anti Retifilio. Nope, not going to happen there. So there was a warning shot from Shothos. One or two because he will have another opportunity out of Curve Grande. Through Curve Grande, he has an opportunity to go back on board with him. Can he move himself to that front side of the racetrack? Yes, he can. And it will pass him down into that second of the three chicanes on track and actually one of the things shake is that everyone focuses on turn, sec, oh, sorry, chicane number one chicane number three but many people forget 
that a second you came they're all bunched up right now side by side we've got ourselves straight sure horse Right now, embroiled in the battle with El Gahapana as they now head themselves down to the Vayante Ascari. And Al Hapala could act as the sacrificial lamb if he wants to help Decorps get away. All that battling at the second chicane, the big missed apex from Shothos going too deep in on the brakes has allowed the corpse to break DRS. And that is so crucial here. With one second, you open that flap, you get yourself that extra speed boost down these long straights. Now Shothos will have to work on his hot lapping to get back to their corpse. But their corpse is gone now, so it's Shothos versus Fluke for position number two in damage limitation. Look at Kazuki Gun though, Kazuki Umashima tucked right underneath with Ilka Harpala just in front and he goes to the inside of all places, makes it work, thank you very much, Radicals online driver through, Harpala under pressure as well, now behind from Partington. And also the Evil Ocean Racing Team car there as well, a Partington was so close there, down the third chicane, now the run will come down through to chicane number two, will Partington have anything that he can do, he's close, but not quite close enough to make the move, or will he? He moves down to the inside, down into the second chicane, not able to do anything there, so he will remain parted in there in the sixth position, as we've had a wild first few laps here at Monza. You talk about, Jake, this is the fastest race of this four race season, and these guys have kind of got it into their head that they need to get it done. Exactly, it's only 20 laps and of course it's got the highest average top speed of all circuits so you're always going to be having very high adrenaline levels as you go through and that may mean that drivers go for moves that don't necessarily work out in favour of what other vehicles certainly do. Still got other battles like Matteo Ugolotti against Josh Thompson. Thompson in fact dropping backwards now as Ugolotti has made his way through as has Matteo Calastani so there's been a mistake somewhere for Josh Thompson out on circuit but yet again you have to look at what's going on between Harpala and Partington because there will be toe for Ilka Harpala but Partington's going to get the double toe so he's going to be able to charge at 350 kilometers an hour one of the highest top speeds as he gets onto the brakes in towards turn number one and you know what inside line not decisive oh. and they just about make it work there will my goodness but side by side it will stay yeah they will stay as uh, we have a better look then through the trees and that's the only issue with Monza there's so many trees around here it's hard to see what's going on at times but still side by side into the second chicane who's going to get it it's going to be part of moving himself up into the fifth position that's going to replay of that one because good Jake that was amazing it was brilliant and that is how you do it you talk about what happened maybe this year between Fernando Alonso and Jolian Palmer and the incident that was done there that was how you do it going too wide into that corner because you looked at Partington he gave enough room there on the inside for Harpala to have a line but by the same point made that second apex and hung Harpala out to dry who lost all of the DRS now one and a little bit seconds behind and look at Partington actually on this lap he is fighting for his world's fastest gamer seat right now because he's got Umashima in front and this is for position number four now Will. Yeah, and uh, you've got to consider that because it is essentially what it takes all in this competition as well. David Decor leads this race right now over Fake Shore Horse, but that might not be enough in terms of the points gap. And we don't know. That's the thing, the points gap between these rows could be because of the strength of field in this event here, Jake. Yes, yeah, certainly it is always going to be very strong and nobody quite knows the algorithm to how many points are scored, but it's a lot when you get onto iRacing official point standards. But that was a good move actually on that last lap from Freak Show Thorst to get through at turn number one on Jamie Fluke. Fluke didn't see it coming from a long way back and I thought it would be a lot more difficult actually for Show oh, let's get some words out, Show Thorst to make that move. I thought it would be a lot more difficult, but it wasn't in the end. Jamie Fluke it was easy for James who didn't defend into turn number one like I expected him to and as such the gap remains 2.4 seconds but it's only 2.4 seconds it was a 23.8 last time by for Shothorst who had to make a move on that lap as well. A bit like Hamilton early on today as he tried to defend from the driver of Max Verstappen um, I know it's not McLaren but I thought about it because of the fact that James Wood realises the defensive opportunities he's currently scored at seven tenths of a second back. Let's see what his maneuver will be as he heads through the curve of Parabolica. Not good. He's got a good run, but it's not good enough. Anyway, near to get time. 
No, and he'll get some toe. That's going to be beneficial, but it's only a passing moment at seven tenths of a second. You basically keep the status quo. And, well, Jamie Fluke, you can definitely see that. Only 336 kilometers an hour overall. That is not going to be anywhere near the almost the 360 Ks that we saw from Michael Partington tucked in right underneath trying to get past the likes of Ilka Hapala. So there is a lot of difference in that maybe a setup thing that Jamie Fluke's trying to make sure that because he had the pole position maybe he wanted to break out and away it's a completely different ball game though when overtakes come into effect it will do indeed already seven laps into this 20 lap event there's the drivers storming on the way down into the second chicane and actually out of the three chicanes we talked about that already the second chicane may well be the most difficult but there's your leader David Accord on the gap between himself and the rest of your field is currently scored as 2.2 seconds and well after a disappointment i would say at kota a week ago david decor back in the driving seat yeah he certainly is i thought it was damage limitation at circuit of the americas for him because he did get the lead he was involved in that little scrap with show thoughts heading down into turn number 11 but you have to say, David Decourt, he is bouncing back, and I think he does have that good resiliency, and he is one of those products that you see happening in French sim racing that doesn't necessarily get reported and doesn't get enough credit for what they do. French sim racing, you argue right now, Will, is in the strongest position that it has ever been. You've got the likes of Decourt, you've got the likes of Antoine Higelin, you've got the likes of, say, uh, Jeremy Boutsloot, Morgan Moran. You name them, French sim racing is going through. And that goes back to the Petit Le Mans that we had as well. Real yeah. championship racing and all French team gets P2 in prototypes. And the thing about the French sim racing team is that they are set to be, I would say, top eight in the world right now. They are not going to compete necessarily every single race against the likes of Finland, Club Diac, the likes of Club UK and Ireland, for example. But they are right up on there as we ride on board right now with El Capara. They are the defending reigning world champions in terms of the Irish and World Cup of I racing. But the thing is, I don't think that that team is the strongest going to be. And actually, Ilka Hapala is out on his own right now. Yeah, he certainly is. But I think you've forgotten the undisputed part there of your mantra that you were trying to go there. But yes, Hapala on his oh, own. Oh, 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 I'm going to stop you there. Me with Diac or Finland are undisputed at this point. Well, Finland in the World Cup of iRacing has won, what, the last three, the last yeah, four World Cups? Yeah, but let's not forget Diac. But, well, Diac has been very good, and Martin Kronke has certainly elevated his game. But the point is, like, when you look at it, it's always a finite balance. I'll tell you what, guys. You take the heat for that one, Jake. We'll talk about the race, because it's going to be that crazy over the course of the next 11 laps. Hilke Hapala versus Michael Partington right now as they head themselves through this first of the three chicanes, of course. The famous three chicanes that take place here at Monza. The first of those, actually, Jake, was re... I'm trying to find a word here. Um, it was reprofiled, that's one, down in 2000. It, the thing is, that chicane made a lot of difference, but a lot of people don't recognize that in 2000 because of the fact that we lost the life of a marshal down on the second chicane in 2000. Exactly, and well, that is going to be something just to keep an eye out on in this event. So the fact that Chicane has been remodeled and the circuit has been, you know, reshaped to fit with the times, you know, there is a lot of history that goes along with this that even goes to the point of the oval banking that goes around the circuit. Yes, there is a lot of history here, and that is reflected in the style of racing, how it is very much get on the par, you hit the brakes, get on the par, you hit the brakes. It's very much more suited to the 1960s style of racing where it was all about how much grunt you could get in the vehicle and not necessarily understanding about downforce. Now you put downforce in, it becomes a completely different challenge and that's what we see. I've been keeping an eye out though on this battle going on. Josh Thompson is having the worst race I think I've ever seen him have because he's dropped two more positions on this lap. One to Bobby Zelensky, one to Mikael Lamoureux of MXS Racing. And look at that. He's now back down into what? Position number 12. And he was up there fighting in about seventh position about five laps ago. He really is struggling actually right now. We'll go on board of him. And again, he can't make a move down his turn number one. Let's have a look at your movers and shakers in this event so far because of the fact that we know that drivers like Thompson have struggled and there's your top 15 up on the screen. And Thompson, well, he's down one position. There are people who are down more than him. 
got the Kuzla starting positions here, Monza, we expect some people to charge away to the field here, Jay. Yes, there is a lot of opportunity, and Bobby Zelensky up nine from the back of the grid, has done a very good job. Ugolossi plus seven on his own accord, and you've got Calistani plus two. They are showing that you can make overtakes here at Monza in comparison to other circuits. I want to focus though on Frank Schofield because he's pulling in a tenth at a time, and he's got uh, 10 laps to go when he crosses the start finish line here to make something happen but the way that he's been working he was about two and a half seconds back he's brought that down to 1.7 I want to check the gap when he crosses the line this time it's gone up actually it's 1.8 seconds but if he breaks into one second if he psychologically hurts Davy De Corps in that sense De Corps now has to worry I saw a race between De Corps and I believe it was one of the positive sim race drivers Roscoe Whoa. that's a slow down I think from Schofield's there at one yeah and he lost a tenth of a second lap number 10 he's going to lose about half a second on lap number 11 there Great sure horse, and that's going to be the issue for him then, because he will now lose anything that he's gained. No DRS, and again, another five laps of charging through to try and get through to your race leader, who is David Decor right now. David Decor is your race leader. He is now by 3.3 seconds. That is huge. It's staggering, and that's the one mistake that Shothorst didn't need to make. And that's the thing that we've been saying about Frank Schothorst. Yes, he's the quickest driver in this grid, but it doesn't mean anything if you're the quickest if you start making mistakes and drop back three seconds. He's brought Jamie Fluke back into DRS range, and the Apex Racing UK driver now may have an opportunity to close, but the dirty air effect again of Ascari coming into play, dropping another two-tenths of a second there is Jamie Fluke, and that's the struggles that you're going to have here. Yes, while it is very much top speed, do need a little bit of error there and that's why sometimes you see teams and drivers going to a medium downforce package rather than a low downforce package the question for jamie fluke is though did he expect the fact that Wake shawhall to make an incident and then put him back into the rs range because he is closing closing hard but not close enough down into turn number one well no he was saving ers he knew he was never going to be close enough into turn number one the variante del retifilio so for jamie fluke no, you can never predict a driver making it. You always go out there and race, hoping that your own pace will bring you back into play. But if it doesn't happen, well, so be it. On the brakes, Variante della Roggia, the most difficult of the chicanes, as we have said on multiple occasions. Jamie Fluke, well, he, all he can do now is hope to get past and score some major points. The win starting to fall out of reach now with eight laps to go or so when they cross the line. It's now about how Jamie Fluke responds and at that second Lesmo there, running a little bit wide, and that's going to cost him a bit of time. So we're down to less than half race distance here, but your leader is the driver of David Decor. There are your top eight on your screen right now. Decor leads by Frank Shawhorse over three seconds. Jamie Fluke in third place. Kazuki Imashima fourth. Parkinson in fourth place. Ilka Hapala in sixth. Luna in seventh, and Matteo rounds out your top eight. But Jake taken away for a couple of laps because Shawhorse versus Fluke is not over yet. No, it isn't. And for Frank Shawhorse, it's about run for the hills and hope you break away. He closes the gap to the court, so that won't matter. It's now 7 tenths a second again. And Jamie Fluke 24-7 against the 24-5 of Frank Shawhorse. There's not much you can argue except for the fact that Frank Shawhorse is trying everything to hope that the tyres stay in play. 38 degrees track temperature. It's another hot one here at World's Fastest Gamer. And it might just be the case of keep the vehicle on the island for a lot of drivers because at the end of the day when it's such a quick circuit and when you're dealing with low levels of what is going to be downforce there's not much more you can say about it wiggle though from show course through the della roggia and into the two right handers here lesmo one and lesmo two and jamie fluke looking a little bit more poised through these sorts of sections but it when it comes down to it and getting onto that power he just isn't able to get himself into that situation it's about getting yourself slow in fast out and that's what a lot of drivers certainly do understand to fail they've gone through a drs section here on the run to ascari you can sometimes make that move but again you look at jamie fluke he's having to take a slightly wider line because of that dirty air effect oh. being produced by frick show thorson oh well yeah there was a car turn uh, almost spun behind him that's a radical line i believe that was good Kazuki Imashima replay coming up here now. I think Kazuki Imashima lost it there on the exit of the Variante Ascari. Replay's coming up there from the exit of Lesma number two right now. 
But that Radical for line team, we've seen that before in the Irish World Championship Grand Prix Series track. They are good, but they make little mistakes because of the balancing of that race car. It's on edge. And for here, Kazuki Ibushima clips a curve, clips another curve, loses it. Oh my goodness. Almost an any inexperienced driver there finds the wall and, and that's just a simple matter of fact i wouldn't have been able to save that and i know about half the drivers on the irising service certainly wouldn't be able to do so as well but umashima now brings back partington and look at ilka harpala coming back into this one right now because harpala out of nowhere suddenly back onto the rear of partington fighting for the seats and both of them you know, you sort of see the level that Partington's fighting with Ilka Harpler right now. This is good stead for Michael Partington in his future. And he wants to get past Umashima as well. Top 10 standing right now for Umashima in the IRC World Championship Grand Prix Series. He's worth saying that this has no bearing at all on the IRC World Championship Grand Prix Series. It matters for one thing, one thing only. And if you look at the front of the field, David Core versus Freddie Shawhorse. David Core will get the advantage in this race, but we're going to head ourselves as it stands down to a showdown in one week's time at the fantastic place of um, Sao Paulo and the Ultra Drone Interlago Antilados. I would say that right eventually, but we're at a situation right now where this will go down to the final round. It certainly will. Oh, will so much nice. Cuts pace and no, more than that, Shothorst will give the position away. I believe that's another issue that he's had at turn number one. Being too aggressive on the curbs again there, Will. At the first pass of the Variante down at Tefilio, and Shothorst loses the position. We did have side by side as well between Partington and Harpler. I do believe it was in towards that turn number one section. It was an attempt by Harpler. It didn't quite happen. Well, for, this makes the issue bigger now for South Paolo because of the fact that Shaw Horse is down into third place because of the fact that Shaw Horse has lost that uh, second position I would say the championship really is now wide open we'll find out after the end of this event after we go off air but I would say that that moment from say Shaw Horse he hasn't made a mistake really at the start of here today but he has made a mistake down in the middle of the event Exactly, and maybe those gremlins have gone away from Freak Shothos, but by practicing so much on getting those starts right, maybe he's neglected that different part of the game. Although he hasn't lost too much time in comparison, he may still have this opportunity to get back past Jamie Fluke, but check the laps here, Will. It's five to go here at Autodromo Nazionale Monza. And now, Freak Shothos senses a little bit of urgency, closes that gap right back down again to just a couple of tenths of a second as they head through the Variante de Retofilio. And again, he's just hoping to get some form of opportunity between now and the end of this event. But he could Oh my pass. goodness, there's a car around, that's Hapala. Oka Hapara, that's going to be big in terms of the overall championship, but Oka Hapara has spun down at the first chicane here today replay coming up for you right now. And it's two bits of contact, Will, between himself and Partington. A contact on the rear, unsettling Harpler as he was getting out of the Variante Direct Video. A second contact the other side turns him around. And Harpler now behind the uh, Hogsenvelko Motorsports machine, or was behind the Hogsenvelko Motorsports machine, I believe, of Moritz Lohner. Lohner now actually still behind, but the gap about six tenths of a second between them that one position means so much for Ilka Harpala and that basically means championship over yeah there's a replay then and also it's championship over for Partington as well he was third place in the championship heading into this event Jake he was but he gains the position against Ilka Harpala he stops that not rot. enough though to put damage no it's no, it certainly isn't, especially with Umashima in front. But keep an eye on Shothorst again. The gap a lot closer than it was last time. Gap down to four tenths of a second. He may have a late lunge here down towards turn number one. Look at the pace. Break Shothorst has underneath that McLaren. And thank you down to the inside. He makes sure he redeems himself for the two issues he had earlier on today. Now, I don't think he'll catch the course, but that was very good driving. And again, that opens the championship up for the final round. The championship more in favour of Freight your horse but it's not over yet for the driver of Jamie Flute because he wants to come back at this one and he wants to go and get that second position back. 
Well, certainly does. And look at Shothos out of the De La Roja. He was fighting that vehicle all the way to keep control of it. He is starting to have a little bit of a struggle now on those tyres. Those rears are starting to fall away a little bit. And now Jamie Fluke understands that and just needs to stay within about three to four tenths of a second as they head through the Variante Ascari in through the left the right and now the left and it's better there from Jamie Fluke than it has been for a very long time Will and I'm very happy to see that out of him getting his opportunity because all this race he has struggled to Riscari. Is Jamie Fluke there and the Apex Racing UK machine versus Great Shore Horse. We come down then to three laps to go here at uh, Circuit Monza but out front Daniel Decor has got himself a huge lead right now of three point two seconds over Frank Shawhorse and that is again we talk about Orion race team Orion race team versus the Evolution Racing team versus the likes of Apex Racing UK versus the likes of Team Redline it's a four horse race for the overall championship but the thing is in terms of the people who are looking from up above only one driver will matter and that's a driver who wins the overall championship and again the balance tips now down to David Decor and the Orion Race Team, especially as we know how good Orion Race Team are at the final round of the season. And that, of course, is Inter Lagos. And Inter Lagos, they normally produce their best results. It will be great to see, but take no credit away from Red Lines Freak Shotos. He's done well to actually come back into this event, even with the issues he's had. And this is what we keep on saying, Will, when it's not an A-class drive from Frank Schotos, when it's looking more like a B-class drive from him, he's still producing the results. And I know Frank Schotos, on his day, can win races and can get up there and fight it with the very best, the likes of Kronke and House. But it's not really being shown here today from him, but he's still up in second position. That's the big credit you have to take away from this in terms of the effort he's putting in. The issue is, though, Frank Shawhorse has closed in the last two, three laps here, but it's not quite close enough. Jamie Fluke has a run as they come down into turn number one with that DRS and the ERS open, but not able to do anything. That number 19 then of 20, Kazuki Umashima runs in fourth, and Umashima, he is now out of the championship. But that's a shame because Umashima has been so strong in everything he's done in Grand Prix competition. He has, and he's one of those drivers who will be reflecting on what happened at Montreal for him about three years ago when he hit the wall of champions. And he thought, was that my opportunity? Another one will come along. Nothing has come back since for Kazuki Umashima, so he'll hope that there is more opportunities on the horizon. He is always a very accomplished driver, and arguably he will be the figurehead of the Asian market when sim racing makes it big there. But right now, it's about Fluke and Shothors for positions two and three, the last steps on the podium. Remember, if any one of those two drivers run into an issue, find a crash, that's their own championships over. They've got to be so careful about when they make those moves. And look at how Fluke is struggling to keep up with Freak Shothors, who is actually found a setup, I argue here, Will, that has equalised the real differences that you normally see from Team Redline. But the issue is for the driver, Jamie Sleep, he struggled through the third sector. He is still okay if he heads out the white flag up here today. But the issue has been is that Fluke has not been able to be an attacker. He's been a defender here today. Through the first game they come for the final time, nothing going to happen there. But as they exit, that first chicane, head themselves down to chicane number two. They are going to be close. They are going to be close here. That's the thing, Jake. But not quite close enough for Fluke to make a pass. Close, but not quite close enough. Not into that second chicane. And now it's going to have to rely on DRS up towards the Variante Ascari. And you don't often see moves there. It now relies on a mistake out of this right-hander against Freak Shothos. And does he get it out of Lesmo too? Little wiggle, but it's all fine I think he's safe unless we see anything in the final couple of corners though it's time to turn over to David Decor he won the first round of this championship he will win the third round unless he makes a huge mistake down at the curve of Parabolica behind you see Frey Shawhorse versus Jamie Fluke they are battling for second place but as they come through the curve of Parabolica for the final time Fluke Nowhere near close enough back. It'll be a case of the David Accord Show wins here 
at Monza. David Accor, Orion Race Team will win. It'll be Short Horse in second. Third place will go down to the driver of Jamie Fluke and Kazuki Imashima in fourth position. A little bit of a way back will be the driver of Michael Partington there. He runs out your top five with a bit of damage as well, but he does round out your top five. Ilka Hapana is in sixth place. And then you've got Maritz Luna there in P number seven. They are your top seven here today, Jake. And well, David Accor wins, but that's not the entire story. But David Accor does now make this championship battle interesting. He does his second win in world's fastest game. There is always going to be something to keep an eye on. Back below to the line between Jan von der Heyden and David Pacelli. That one's not going to change, unfortunately, for Jan von der Heyden. Shame there. But yes, the championship now does take an interesting turn because Shothos, yes, he has done very well. He has stayed the most consistent with a win and two second places. But take nothing away from two wins and a third from David Accords. Both of them have been the yin to the yang of everyone else. And right now, it's a case of the corpse wanting it and Shothorst needing it. Let's look then at your final race results. David Accor wins by 2.7 seconds over Freight Shaw Horse, Jamie Fluke in third, Kazuki Umishima in fourth, and Michael Partington then rounding out your top five here today. P number six is Ilka Hapala. P number seven, Maurice Luna. P number seven, Marissa Ugaletti there. And P number nine is Michael Lamarouk. And P10 is Ram Jonik then. As we head back and have a look at the rest of the results. It's worth noting we've had a bit of a higher attrition rate here today. Three drivers didn't finish their race. Josh Thompson, Matteo Constini, and Jake Kluwer didn't finish. The protege for the team of VOS Kleiner Simsport. But also two drivers finished outside of that one minute window. They're Diego Omara and also Alexandre Valente here today, Jake. Yeah, Diego Jimenez and Alexandre Vallete outside of one minute over 20 laps. Not often you hear that, but that's the sort of margins you have to improve by a minute over 20 laps. That's about two seconds a lap, you would probably argue to feel in this situation. So drivers at the bottom, this is a big learning curve for them. This is them understanding, okay, that's what the top of the mountain looks like. That's how much time I have to work with during these races. And I think that... For those who are using this as maybe a platform, because this is open to rookies all the way up to the very top at Pro WC license, this is a big learning curve because normally you need an A license to drive these vehicles. Some people will drive this to say, what would it be like to be an iRacing World Championship Grand Prix Series driver? What would it be like to be at the top of sim racing? And some of them understand that, yes, we need to improve, but this is great as a tournament, not just for the fact that you fight for that seat in McLaren, but it's great for the entirety of the sim racing community because they understand the level that they need to be at to get to the top. And next week, we conclude it at Interlagos. And Interlagos, for me, is going to be a massive, massive race, especially after the fact that David Decor is now a two-time winner in this series. Exactly, and Interlagos as a circuit always produces the classic in the final round of the championship. That's why if I ever did a series, I wouldn't have any argument on what the final race is. I'd say the final race would always be uh, the circuit of Interlagos, and I'd always say round four is Imola, because why wouldn't it be? Is but that that's Glock? The side the... I think it may be Glock in that situation. That's always the moment that everyone turns to it at Brazil, but... We're not going to have any sort of situation, I wouldn't think, where people will run out of fuel. That's by the by, but I think we'll see some very good battling there. And I think it is a showdown between De Corps and Chothorst. It is Redline versus Orion. It is Club France against Club Benelux. Who's going to win, do you think, Jake? Because we've got David Court on one hand, who is fantastic. And again, has reinvigorated that Orion race team. We expect Ilka Hapala to be the person who does that. But it's David Court right now who has done so. But on the other hand, you've got the mighty machine of Team Redline. Can Team Redline pull it off when we head ourselves over to Brazil? It depends on what Freak Shothorst wants. It depends on how his schedule plays up because you also have to think that I believe it's in a week's time where we have the finale of the Irising World Championship Grand Prix Series. Yes. That's going to be taking away from Frank Schothorst and David DeCorps respectively. But for DeCorps, 
he's already safe in this series. So is Shotel. So the question is, it depends on who turns up actually for that race. If either one of those drivers decide, no, I'm not going to race, then you know that both of their priorities lie on this world's fastest game seat. And it comes down to a fact of David Corpse has stepped up his game and Frank Shothos has had to sort of adapt to that a little bit. I think Shothos will find another level. Yes, I think Shothos will win the race, but I think the Corpse will take the title with a second place finish. So that's what you've got to look forward to, ladies and gentlemen, in just one week's time here on Racebot TV and on iRacing Live. It will be the final part of iRacing's version of McLaren's world's fastest gamer. It will be in Sao Paulo, Brazil. It will be a fantastic race between Orion Race Team and Team Red Line. On one hand, you've got David Decor and the team who's looking to get themselves back into relevant in terms of sim racing. On the other hand, you've got yourself Team Red Line who's looking to punch another driver into the finals. What will happen? You'll find out in one week's time. That guy's been Jake Sperry. I've been Will Vincent, and we will talk to you all in one week's time.